Hey, welcome to the Gospel of Luke. We're at Luke 23, today, verse 40 and 41. Jesus is hanging on the cross, and we read the text. But the other, answering, rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. So here are the two thieves. They're being crucified side by side. Jesus is in the middle. And they're having a conversation up there. We've been going through the last day or two. And what do we see this morning? Finally, the one thief turns, his heart softens, and he turns to the other thief. And he says, you know, don't you, don't you have a sense of what's going on? Don't you realize that we're, we're being executed right now? We're dying, and, and you and I are guilty. But he says, he's talking about Jesus. He, but this man has done nothing wrong. So he recognizes Jesus' basic purity, his basic innocence. And that is really interesting. Here is a dying criminal, and he says this. He's thought about Jesus. Everybody around there has heard about these things going on, and so have these guys. And been seeing how Jesus reacted to the, the smiting, the spitting, the, the, the taunting, and the, the, uh, with Jesus having the nails driven through his hands, and he prays, Father, forgive them. Do you think the thief heard that, maybe? Somebody heard it because it's in the Bible. See, so I think he must have said it loud enough that the thieves that were crucified with him heard it. And so, yes, this person's been affected by Jesus. And so, and so he tells the other, gives a warning to the other fellow. Don't you know that, you know, we're guilty, but he's not. And so recognizing this basic guiltlessness of Jesus, very interesting that this criminal, this criminal was drawn to that. He wanted, he, he had things he wanted to be right in his life, and he wasn't. And now his life is ending, and yet he still aspires to the goodness. He would like to be good and like Jesus. And so he points that out. This man has done nothing wrong. He shouldn't be here. We should be here. He shouldn't be here. I just think that's an in crucial insight there at the cross, is these three persons, Jesus and the two criminals, are processing this execution, which they are all in the midst of. And God is on his throne, and he still allows Jesus, he even sends Jesus, the innocent, to die for the guilty. And this is part of God's plan to make atonement, at one to cover and address the sin problem, to address it completely and fully, so that you and I have a new opportunity to choose God that we wouldn't have if Jesus hadn't died on the cross for us. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for this criminal on the cross who is, is he's in the last hours of his life, and he turns and he says, this man has done nothing wrong. Thank you for that confession. Thank you for that. Lord, help other people, help us and others as well to see the innocence, the guiltlessness of Jesus, and to be drawn toward that, to want to be right ourselves. Please, Lord, put this into our hearts. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. God bless you today.